Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to try to tackle environment. And the one tutorial I came across and attempted to follow was this video called How to make environments in Blender by Beak. One thing I want to note is that the original title of the tutorial was called Environments for Beginner in Blender, which is actually why I followed this tutorial in the first place. But I think this tutorial is a little bit advanced for people like me who just finished the donut tutorial by Blender Guru. But if you have been using Blender for at least a few months, then this is a very good tutorial to follow along. I think Biek might have also recognized this and that's why he changed the title of the video. So as a beginner, I was having trouble following this tutorial, but at least I forced through it and found other solutions to each unique problems. And I cannot wait to share them here with you today, so stick around until the end to see each solution. The first problem we run into is with the water. In the tutorial, Biek just says he used his custom water and doesn't elaborate on how to do it ourselves. First time around, I gave up after this step, but after a few days, I tried it again. And I found this Reddit post that shows how to add water using Geometry Node. And like always, I'm going to put everything I mentioned in this video in the description down below. I would suggest playing around with the strength setting to get the look of the water you are looking for. Now, this water doesn't look exactly as the water in the tutorial, but it gets the job done. And that's exactly what I did throughout this video. Everything is slightly different than what you see in the original tutorial, but it at least looks similar. Now the next thing I did was add this rocky image texture from Polyheaven just to make it more realistic. As you can see I scaled down the image so the scale of the rock makes sense and to also make sure it doesn't have noticeable repeating patterns. As you can see here I'm putting the base color, the roughness and the displacement individually but I have found that you can do it all in one go. In order to do that, you'll have to make sure principal BSDF is selected and then click Ctrl Shift T. When the pop-up opens, select all of the textures you want to use like the base color, roughness, displacement and any other textures. And then click principal texture setup and then it will automatically apply each texture to its correct corresponding link in the principal BSDF. You'll see me use this technique when I'm adding the plane. The next thing we did was add the grass. Now again I don't know how Biek did this, he just clicked some button and grass just appeared. So I had to look this video up by Bro3D. If you skip to the part where he's adding the grass and trees in his tutorial, he will show you how to download and use the collection to add both the trees and the grass. This is also the tutorial where I learned the Ctrl Shift T from. So I would highly recommend you watch this tutorial as well. I used this grass model from Polyhaven. As you can see I used weight paint to determine where the grass is going to be. Because you don't want to have grass in places where the camera is not going to see. Having too much grasses would just make the render time longer. So it's better to use weight paint for this kind of situation. One thing I did was use the interpolate setting. Where in the display it shows only 10 but when rendering it's going to render out 100 for each 10 blades of grass. I only came across this is because I was clicking random buttons to see what they do. And I would highly recommend you to test out different settings to see if it gives you a better result. Just play around until you like what you see. The next thing we did was add the trees. Now for this I just brute forced it and placed each tree individually. I just looked through the camera view and placed where I thought a tree was needed. I used this tree model from Polyhaven. The next thing we did was add the fog and I just followed the original tutorial and got this result. I tried messing around with different color to see what fit the scene best. Also I forgot to mention this earlier but I used this HDRI from Polyhaven as the environment lighting. The next thing I did was add this plane model from Sketchfab. At this point this was my third or fourth attempt at doing this project and I didn't want to do the flames. Instead I wanted to make the plane look like it has been rusting away for a long time. Now whenever you bring this plane into Blender it doesn't retain its original color. So you'll have to do the Ctrl Shift T thing here as well. 
but one thing to note is that this plane is broken into separate parts so you'll have to do it for each part separately. For example, you'll have to do once for the interior, another time for windows, and then the main body, and so on. After this, I tried moving the plane around to get the right angle and added a light source from the left side. Just playing around until it looks right. One thing I didn't like is how brand new and clean this plane looked. This is where I got the idea to add rust and damages to the plane. Now if you haven't seen my last week's video on how to make realistic damages to your model then I would highly recommend you go and watch that video. I'll put a link in the description down below. In order to bring that texture into this blender file I had to look at this video by fun with blender. Just follow that tutorial step by step and then you'll be able to bring any geometry node from one blender file to another. Make sure to ungroup the geometry node once you bring it into a different blender file. As you can see here in order to use the plane texture and damage texture from the shader ball, what I did was add another mix shader tab and then combine both principal BSDF into one. And I repeated this pattern over and over again for each shader part of the plane. This will change the color of the plane but this can be easily fixed from the color tab that we have from the shader ball. After making sure the color were corrected to the original plane color, I went ahead and changed different settings from the tab like edgeware, dirt, color and damage to see what gave me the best result. I will recommend trying different sliders and playing around until you see the result you like. That's exactly what I did here. After messing around with each slider, this is the final result I was happy with. Next, I went back to changing the lighting. I added a large warm tone light right next to the plane. And I also added some in the distance next to the trees. Even with the new lighting, I still wasn't satisfied. Because the plane looked totally intact despite it appearing being there for a while and accumulating rust. There were no damages from the crash. So at first I tried the edit tab but that didn't seem to work so I went to sculpt mode and that actually did the trick. I was able to bend the wings and also pull out the front of the plane including the propeller. I wanted to add some green algae or leaves on the plane to make it more lived in and realistic but at this point I was tired of working on this project. It took me over 3 weeks to find all of these solutions and here is the final result of that. Since now I was able to add damages to the plane, I decided to change the angle of the plane. But I forgot to record that part. Now I know that the final result looked nothing like the tutorial I followed, but I think it was a decent attempt. Overall, I'm very happy with the result. And this will do it for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.